Today on Flawless TV, we are going to make a rose water burnt caramel flan. I have a dinner party tonight and I think it is going to be a flawless finish to my spring meal. In this flan, we have six simple ingredients. We have sugar, rose water, vanilla extract, sweetened condensed milk, evaporated milk, and three eggs. Now, before we put the ingredients together, I have to talk about this very special ingredient. I found it at an international market recently, and I had never seen it called for in any recipe, but I love roses, the smell of roses. I love growing roses. My dear grandma Ivy's last name is Ring Rose, my mother's maiden name. So I, I had to try it. I, I came home and I started to play with it, but above all, the smell intoxicated me. It is so beautiful. It reminds me of spring, and this is why I decided to try and put it in a springtime dessert. It's a little bit like working with lavender, however. If you put too much lavender oil or extract or rose water into something, it's going to taste like soap. Too little, it will get uh, overpowered by the other ingredients. But I think I found the balance in this flan that turns out just beautifully. So. To get started, we are going to melt or liquefy one cup of sugar. Let's head over to the stovetop and make that happen. We are going to liquefy one cup of sugar. To do so, I have a medium saucepan. I'm going to put the heat on to about medium. Grab my one cup of sugar. it right in. Now, it's incredible to me, when I first started working with sugar and caramel making, that sugar can just melt. I, to make it liquid, I don't actually have to add any liquid. I know you don't believe me right now, because it looks just like snow. But I promise you, it's going to turn to liquid. And after it liquefies, actually kind of while it's melting, it's going to turn to a golden brown. That's when I'm going to start uh, moving it so that it doesn't get too brown. And as soon as it's golden brown and liquidy, we're going to take it off the heat. I want to be really gentle when I do stir the sugar. I don't want it to end up coating the sides of the pot. This can accidentally cause uh, the sugar to seize or scalding, which um, is hard to come back from. You'll have to start again from scratch. So when the sugar starts to melt, you'll notice that uh, the edges uh, get liquidy. Our, our solution is still pretty clear. But you can see even in these chunks that it's already starting to get golden brown. Again, I'm being really gentle with how I move the sugar around the pan, being careful not to splash it up against the sides. And with just a little bit of patience, at some point in the next minute, this is all going to be liquid. We're almost there. I'm just waiting for those last few chunks to melt into the rest of the caramel. Now it's time to pour it into our pie plate. All right, now we're going to pour our caramel, newly liquefied sugar, immediately into a glass pie plate. This is a nine and a half inch deep dish pie plate. Really anything nine inches or slightly more is gonna work great. So after I pour it into my pie plate, I'm just gonna rotate to coat the sides as well. Look at that, it's like stained glass. I love it. 
gorgeous. Okay, that is fine for right now. Let's set it aside and work on our custard. For the custard, we are going to combine one 12 ounce can of evaporated milk. I'm using a stand mixer. You can also mix this uh, in a bowl with a whisk, but you know, any excuse to use my stand mixer, I just can't resist. This is a 14 ounce can of um, sweetened condensed milk. That looks like caramel itself. We are going to also crack three eggs. Awesome. And now one tablespoon of our intoxicatingly delicious rose water. And one teaspoon of our pure vanilla extract. I'm gonna let that roll just until the eggs break and the custard comes together. Excellent. This simply gets poured right over our stained glass burnt caramel. Then we are going to put, uh, I use a roasting pan because um, a custard really of any kind, whether you're making creme brulee or a flan, it's best to do it in a water bath. This particular uh, flan doesn't need a deep water bath, but I do like to protect myself from potential spills. So I'm gonna put a dish towel in the bottom of a turkey roasting pan. Then I'm going to put my flan um, in the center of that pan. Next, I'm going to boil a good six to eight cups of water in my tea kettle. I've preheated the oven to 350 degrees. So once my tea kettle is boiling with its water, I'm gonna place this into my 350 degree oven. We're gonna pour the boiling water around our flan and bake it for about 50 to 60 minutes until it is just set in the center. My kettle is boiling. And before I move over to the stove, I am going to cover my flan with some aluminum foil. Lovely. So I'm just pouring the water just around the flan. Of course, not letting any of it touch the aluminum foil into the oven. See you in an hour. The flan cooked beautifully in 55 minutes. I wasn't sure it was totally set in the center, so I let it go the full 60 minutes and then I cooled it uh, at room temperature for about an hour and then I let it cool in the fridge until it's completely cold. It's been another few hours after that. Now it's time to plate it. So. To get this flan over onto this plate, I am going to run a butter knife along the edge. All the way around. For good measure, I might just do that twice. All right. To invert it, I am placing my plating plate on top of my pie plate, and I am just going to flip it to the other side and let gravity do some magic.
There we go. I could see it release. Now it's safe to lift it up. And I'm gonna use my little butter knife to center it. Oh, it's set beautifully, so I shouldn't be um, disturbing it by moving it a little bit over. Wonderful. Let's see if I can get a little bit more of this caramel sauce. to come off my pie plate. Beautiful. Oh, it smells so beautiful. Floral, almost like honey because of that rose water. And of course, I mean, burnt sugar doesn't smell bad either. So now I would like to put some garnish on it. And if you didn't know it, Rose petals are edible. That's right, roses are edible flowers. So from my beautiful bouquet, I am going to take some of my prettiest flowers and make a garnish. You know, I love symmetry in so many things. Um, but when it comes to plating food, I really think it's nice to be a little more haphazard and asymmetrical. So we're just gonna roll with this. I feel like I want one more pink one. I don't know if it's the pink plate, but I'm feeling the pink. Wow, that's gorgeous. Now let's do a little petal action. Do some yellow petals. And then maybe a few right on top. How flawless is that? I can't wait to dive in. Oh my God. 